лайки, ставьте комментарии. Всем заранее спасибо. to this Talon II articulated electric multiple unit built by Bombardier Transportation. This is a three-car variant delivered to the S-Bahn Mitteldeutschland network in 2013. During this brief introduction, we will cover how to start up the unit for operation, get moving, and then how to bring the unit to a stop. To start with, climb aboard via the cab door and sit in the driver's seat. During normal operation, this unit draws electricity from the overhead catenary via a pantograph. However, since the pantograph is currently in the down position, we have to power the initial systems by priming the auxiliary battery. With power available, use the master key to unlock the control desk and turn on the multifunction displays.
Welcome to this BR182 electric locomotive in DB traffic red livery. During this brief introduction, we'll go through the start-up, stopping and passenger door operations. Climb aboard to get started. The battery will power up the control desk and allow you to interact with it. It's important to use the correct light configuration when the train is operational. A lot of your time will be spent in the driver's seat. To get the locomotive up and running, set the master switch. Now activate the pantograph so that it raises up and makes contact with the overhead catenary. The locomotive is now ready to be energized. This is controlled by the main circuit breaker. Headlights are important in letting others around know that a locomotive is operational.
We now need to wait a moment and let the brake system charge. It'll take a minute or two. When stopped for longer periods of time, or when leaving the cab, a parking brake is engaged. We'll need to ensure that this is released in order to get moving. Use the master switch to determine the direction of travel. Give a quick glance of the platform to ensure all is safe, and then unlock the doors. Boarding is now complete, so set the doors to locked. The train brake is used for normal line operations. Due to the size and weight of this train, small amounts of traction should be used to overcome initial friction and prevent overpowering the electrical systems. Now we're rolling, we can apply more power and focus can be diverted towards achieving a desired speed. used to easily move without engaging power. On a flat gradient, this is great for maintaining a speed limit. There's a short distance between here and your next stop, so be sure to manage the train and prevent overspeeding. final approach to Dessau and will soon need to start applying a small amount of brake force to achieve a comfortable stop.
Like before, unlock the doors to allow passenger boarding to commence. Good work! That concludes all the basics of this locomotive. Welcome to this DB PBZFA control car in DB traffic red livery. During this brief introduction, we will go through the startup, stopping, and passenger door operations. Climb aboard to get started. The battery will power up the control desk and allow you to interact with it. It's important to use the correct light configuration when the train is operational. A lot of your time will be spent in the driver's seat. The brake key confirms that the train is in control from this control car. To get the train up and running, set the reverser. Now activate the pantograph so that it raises up and makes contact with the overhead catenary. The locomotive is now ready to be energised. This is controlled by the main circuit breaker. Headlights are important in letting others around know that a train is operational. Give a quick glance of the platform to ensure all is safe, then unlock the doors.
boarding is now complete, so set the doors to locked. The train brake is used for normal line operations. Due to the size and weight of this train, small amounts of traction should be used to overcome initial friction and prevent overpowering the electrical systems. Now we're rolling, we can apply more power and focus can be diverted towards achieving a desired speed. Coasting is a method used to easily move without engaging power. On a flat gradient, this is great for maintaining a speed limit. There's a short distance between here and your next stop, so be sure to manage the train and prevent overspeeding. Like before, unlock the doors to allow passenger boarding to commence. Good work. That concludes all the basics of this control car. This is a Class 47 diesel electric locomotive in British Rail green livery. This tutorial will go through the start and stop procedure. Climb aboard to get going. Enter the cab through the door indicated.
When you're ready, sit in the driver's seat. To get the loco started, set the battery isolation switch to the closed position. To activate the control desk, set the master key into the on position. Set the reverser into the engine only position. The locomotive is now ready to be started. Push the engine start button on the control desk. To release the air pressure holding the wheels, set the driver's brake to the running position. With the locomotive running, to get going, set the reverser to the forward position. To make others aware that this loco is operational, switch the headlights on. Turn the parking brake handle to release it. Finally, to get going, set the throttle to at least 20%. Well done, the loco is on the move. To maintain a specific speed, set the throttle back to the off position. To bring the locomotive to a gentle stop, set the driver's brake to the initial application position. Take this basic training and apply it to further operations and you'll do great.
This is a Class 09 diesel electric shunter used mainly for freight operations, but known to help with passenger procedures too. Let's take a look at the engine's starting and stopping procedures. Climb aboard to get started. Enter the cab through the door indicated. Before anything else, set up the marker lights. Turn the main switch on the panel up there to on. Now the main power switch is on, walk around the exterior of the locomotive and turn on all four marker lights. Great! Climb back aboard the locomotive and sit down in the driver's seat. To start the locomotive, hold the master key in the start position for at least 5 seconds. With the locomotive running, set the master key to the on position. The reverser lever determines the direction of travel. Set this into the forward position. Move the parking brake handle into the release position. Finally, to get going, set the throttle into position 1 for at least 5 seconds and then set it to position 2.
Welcome to this Class 33 diesel electric locomotive in British Rail Green Livery. This brief introduction will go through start-up, stopping and passenger door operations. A lot of time will be spent in the locomotive cab, so climb aboard to get started. To get the locomotive started, set the battery isolation switch. When ready, sit in the driver's seat. The master key is used to activate the control desk. The locomotive is now ready to be started. Release the brakes and allow the system to charge. Use the reverser to set the direction of travel. Headlights are used to inform others around that this train is active. Give a quick glance at the platform to ensure all is safe, then unlock the doors. Boarding is now complete, set the doors to locked. With the startup procedure complete, release the parking brake. Increase the throttle to start moving. Don't apply too much power too quickly, it's important to provide a smooth ride for passengers.
that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. Good work. That's the basics covered. A manual can also be obtained that provides more detail about the full functionality of this locomotive. Welcome to this BR185.2 electric locomotive in DB traffic red livery. During this brief introduction we will go through the start and stop procedures. Climb aboard to get started. The battery will power up the control desk and allow you to interact with it. This locomotive draws power from the overhead electrical supply via a contact arm mounted on the roof. For this to work, we'll need to set up and then raise the pantograph. A lot of your time will be spent in the driver's seat. To get the locomotive up and running, set the master switch. Headlights are important in letting others around know that a locomotive is operational. We now need to wait a moment and let the brake system charge. It'll take a minute or two. The locomotive is now ready to be energized. This is controlled by the main circuit breaker. When stopped for longer periods of time or when leaving the cab, a parking brake is engaged. We'll need to ensure this is released in order to get moving. Use the master switch to determine the direction of travel. The train brake is used for normal line operations. Due to the size and weight of this train, small amounts of traction should be used to overcome initial friction and prevent overpowering the electrical systems.
Now we're rolling, we can apply more power and focus can be diverted towards achieving the desired speed. Coasting is a method used to easily move without engaging power. On a flat gradient, this is great for maintaining a speed limit. To bring this freight train to a safe stop, only a small amount of braking force is required. Practice and experience will teach you how much force you'll need. Good work. That concludes all of the basics of this locomotive. Welcome to this BR143 electric locomotive in DB traffic red livery. During this brief introduction, we will go through the start and stop procedures. Climb aboard to get started. The battery will power up the control desk and allow you to interact with it. This locomotive draws power from the overhead electrical supply via a pantograph mounted on the roof. For this to work, we'll need to set up which configuration we'll be using. A lot of your time will be spent in the driver's seat. To get the locomotive up and running, set the master switch. 
Headlights are important in letting others around know that a locomotive is operational. We now need to wait a moment and let the brake system charge. It'll take a minute or two. The locomotive is now ready to be energized. This is controlled by the main circuit breaker. The train brake is used for normal line operations. When stopped for longer periods of time or when leaving the cab, a handbrake is engaged. We'll need to ensure this is released in order to get moving. The force selector determines how much tractive effort force is being supplied to the train. AFB allows the driver to easily amend the speed of a locomotive as required. Once a desired speed is set, indicated by a red needle on the speedometer, the locomotive will automatically adjust to meet that speed. To prepare the train for stopping, AFB should first be turned off. The size and weight of a train play a large part in determining how much braking force is needed to perform a safe, steady stop. Good work, that is the basics covered. A manual can also be obtained that provides more detail about the full functionality of this locomotive.
This is Hicksville on the Long Island Railroad. Follow the markers to catch the train. The Long Island Railroad offers the ability to ride and operate a multitude of commuter trains along North America's busiest railroad, between New York Penn and Hicksville. You are currently riding an M7 electric multiple unit formed of four A and B coach pairs. Over 400 of these trains operate on a daily basis. TrainSim World allows you to ride and drive trains from a selection of internal and external camera angles. Let's take a look now by exploring the exterior of this train. Other internal and external camera views are available to be explored. These can be accessed from the number keys. You've only travelled a short distance here, so let's take a look at what else there is to enjoy. Welcome to North America's busiest railroad. Visit Jamaica Station, the backbone of this intense commuter network with its impressive glass concourse. Journey underground into the heart of New York. Operate in and out of Atlantic Terminal. Take services along the scenic Hempstead branch and finish up at the eastern limit of Hicksville. Along the way, don't forget to replace misplaced fire extinguishers, update line maps in stations, add local advertising and repair any damaged fences. Welcome the Long Island Railroad.
Welcome to this M7 electric multiple unit in Long Island Railroad livery. During this brief introduction, we will go through the startup, stopping, and passenger door operations. A lot of time will be spent in the engineer's seat, so climb aboard to get started. The master key is used to activate the control desk. The reverser determines the direction of travel. This unit has a combined throttle brake handle, which needs to be set before beginning the startup procedure. Before powering up the unit, the brakes need to be charged to a safe level. Lights are important to let others around know that this unit is active. To unlock the doors, a key must be inserted into the corresponding door control panel and then... Increase the master controller to start moving. Be careful not to apply too much power too quickly, otherwise you might damage the couplings or upset the passengers. stopping at Country Life Press a little further up the line and performing another passenger loading procedure. on our final approach to Country Life Press and need to start applying a small amount of brake force to perform a comfortable stop.
good work. Like before, open the doors to allow passenger boarding to commence. Now, take what you've learned and put it into practice. Complete the next stop at Garden City on your own. Good work. That's the basics covered. 
A manual can also be obtained that provides more detail about the full functionality of this train. Сегодня все, продолжение следует. Не забываем подписаться на мой канал, ставить лайк, оставлять комментарии. Всем заранее спасибо.